Your officials for this evening, Messrs. Jerry Dunne, Larry Rose, and Mark Walker. It's a full house and well behaved. Nothing was thrown on the court after a warning from the Atlantic Coast Conference that if they did during introductions throw anything, technical foul would be called to start the game. Officials tonight, Jerry Dunahy, Larry Rose, and Robert Donato. We mentioned Clemson has not won here since 1984, but they have won two of the last three meetings with Duke. And Tim, when you look at last year's game, a 35-point turnaround between playing here and playing down in Little John. Whistle right off the bat. Steal in the tap. It'll be Duke basketball. Be interesting to see. I said it won't bother Dale Davis having the flu, but we got to watch early on to see how well he can run up and down the court. He's a real competitor, and I would expect him to be able to do all right, but you know that flu bug lately has really ruined some fellas. And the whistle and the foul. Air ball by Kubek. They'll call goaltending rather than the foul. It's 2 nothing. Blue Devils. Campbell with 56 blocks on the year. Almost got another one. Cash will bring it up against the freshman Hurley. This is Young, top of the key. Man to man by Duke Campbell inside with authority. Perfect angle that time, and Campbell gets good position. He was high enough up the lane that Leitner could get no help on the backside and yet had to front him. This is Leitner, and he'll shoot from out there, throws instead, and gets lucky because Hurley's there. Leitner gets it back and loses it. Billy, Mike Krzyzewski was very concerned coming into this game that his club could be emotionally ready after some of the emotional games they played, like the one against Tech. Well, I would agree. They pulled out two huge wins uh, here at home, two games they could just as easily have, have lost. And sometimes it's tough to keep it going on the emotionals, particularly if you're playing a club like Clemson that you've been able to handle in this arena. Outside for three, it's short follow inside by Davis, and it's blocked down by Abunabi. Young, nice running one-hander. At this point, Mike Krzyzewski's not getting the type of defense on the ball, particularly, that he'd like to have. You've got to play the ball tough if you're going to prevent that passer from getting the ball inside. A touch foul called out front against Marion Cash. That's his first and the first team foul against Clemson. This game very, very important for the Tigers. Clemson with a 4-2 and two ACC record. Very much in the hunt, but they've got to steal a couple on the road. A couple of quick whistles out front. It looks like they're really going to call the hand checking close. Henderson's first shot, good. Tied at four. Now, if you're cash, anytime Hurley touches you with his hands, you're going to try to slap him away, make sure the officials call it both, both ends. Campbell walks. Good call. Shuffle his feet. Pretty impressive move after he shuffled, though. And so far, I don't think Duke's putting enough pressure on that ball to prevent Clemson from getting it inside. You make an excellent point. These officials come out, and they're calling everything. This is Hurley for three. Three-point blue double lead. Cash puts it on the floor in front of Hurley. He almost slapped it away. Hurley stays right on him. He had more than a half a step away from the man with the ball. Young. Right for the rebound, Hurley of Duke. Henderson will fire. For two. Good move by Phil Henderson, realizing Leitner was underneath, so he... Although he had the same numbers, Leighton had the advantage rebounding-wise. Nine to four, Duke. Davis inside with the no power move. There. Now, do you notice where the Clemson two-post men are setting up? About two-thirds of the way to three-fourths of the way up the lane. Therefore, it's very difficult if you're going to front them to get any help back there, so the lob is really available. Now, Duke has been hitting the jump shots. Now they go same inside deal. the Apple Mountain. Duke does exactly the same thing. Now, you can't front a man if he's going to get that far up the lane. That's Abu Nabi's first basket of the night. Anderson knocks it out. Changes now. Howling will come in for Young for Clemson. Davis will come in along with Palmer for Duke. Abu Nabi will sit down. Now, you notice 
That time, Abdul Nabi did a perfect thing to Campbell. He gets him two-thirds of the way up the lane, holds his position, allows the ball to be thrown, and then breaks loose under the basket. Cash in trouble. Better give it up. Forrest in the paint, and he's fouled. Fouls called against Crawford Palmer. That's his first and the team's first. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski standing up, wanting Palmer to get over there, draw the charge when he's got a man at that type of disadvantage as opposed to reaching in and trying to go for the steal. 16-53 in the first half, and it's 11-6 Duke. Great move. Nice move by Campbell. Cannot put it down. Curly down the right side. This is Leitner. And the whistles against Campbell. He can't believe it. He looks all around him to see who the foul's on, but it's on him. Down the last time down the floor when Campbell had that move inside, he needs to finish off tougher. I mean, it was a beautiful move that he made as far as the physical nature of it. Then he just has to be tough at the end to make sure that he scores. Duke had hit its last five field goal attempts. It's 11 to 6 Blue Devils. Not the scenario that Cliff Ellis wanted. Leitner's going to move to the basket. His shot is blocked by Davis. Leitner did a nice job showing the ball fake that time, but Davis just didn't go for it. Clemson's just having problems on offense. They're not in rhythm. They're not finding the open man, and they're trying to make things happen. They're forcing it. Uh, Jim, they got it inside so easily the first time or two down the floor. You'd think they'd stay with that until Duke solved it. And you can see what Mike Krzyzewski's doing with a lead. He's going to rest his big people so he doesn't get in that situation where Davis and Campbell have an advantage over Abdul Nabi and Leighton. Abdul Nabi comes in. Henderson stays out. It's Hurley and McCaffrey. Palmer. Abdul Nabi and Davis on the floor for Duke. Davis getting valuable playing time. Of course, with Bricky out of the lineup, and he has really produced. Abdul Nabi turn around jumper. Rebound is Campbell. Morris will take it in the paint. He's pushed from behind by Abdul Nabi, but they're going to call him with the, the charge. Second time in a row, though, that one extra dribble, if you pull up and take the jump shot, as opposed to trying to wedge in between the traffic, probably he'd get it. That's his first, the third team foul against Clemson. Now this word from our good friends at Natural Light. Hi, it's me. I'm in 2702. I'll be right up. Good times, it's only natural. Natural light from Anheuser-Busch. Hey, you look great. You look thirsty. <laughs> now, we've owned this business for 12 years now. Rick's the numbers guy in Pete's ideas. He keeps us from killing each other. <laughs> well, somebody's got to. <laughs> and we never really thought much about how much we depended on each other. No. Not until what happened to Joe last month. Oh, that really threw us for a loop. <laughs> it could have been gone just like that. And then where would we be? Well... I could have had his office. And I could have had his what? parking place. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah, but it, of course. Of course. Oh, you, you, know what? you don't mean that, right? <laughs> we can split up this plan. Guys, right, you just talk. Talking... Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car company offers you a choice of some of the most trouble-free cars you can own. That American car company is Buick. And the 1990 versions of those American cars are Buick LeSabre, Buick Riviera, and Buick Electra Park Avenue. Cash in on quality now during Buick's great American quality days. Tim, we talked about Campbell finishing off aggressively down on the offensive end, which he didn't do. But watch him finish off this defensive rebound. Even with Palmer on his back, he rips it off with a lot of authority. Down the other end, without question, Forrest not only fouls Abdul Nabi, but then plows through anybody else in his way. McCaffrey makes a nice slide. You covered that skiing and snow sledding sometimes. That would have been good even in the snow. 
Billy Clemson has already committed three turnovers. They trail 11 to 6 with 15.35 remaining in the first half. This is the freshman out front working on cash. Straight man by both teams. Davis looks inside to Abunabi, instead goes to Leitner. Dale Davis making it too easy for Leitner to handle the ball. He can not only make that shot from there, but if you're going to be that far away, he'll make the pass. Leitner shot on the way down. His shot was short. This is Howland. See if Clemson goes back to get the ball down inside. They've got to go to Campbell and Davis. That was successful, as you said earlier. Here's Campbell with the turnaround. Great job by Hurley fighting for the rebound, and the foul is called against Dale Davis of Clemson. That's the fourth team foul against the Tigers, and the first on Davis. And you're right. Hurley did a great job going over and getting position, not worrying about catching the ball at all, forcing Davis to come right over his back. caffrey has been having his problems lately moving up to this level. Shot well early on in the year. Air ball. Davis wasn't even close with his shot, but there's the fourth turnover for Clemson. And the thing I don't understand, Tim, is what is the concept here? If you're Clemson, you don't want to get in a running game with this club. Let your big guys get down the floor. By advancing the ball that quickly up the court, you know you're not going to take a three from there with nobody under the basket. So just hold it, let the big guys get in position and try to work on Duke inside. McCaffrey and Davis come out. Kubek and Henderson come back in for Duke. Oh, a great screen by Leitner. And Leitner gets it back and scores. He now has four points. An illegal screen. He set his position in plenty of time for the defender to go around him. 13 to 6, Duke. Nice pass to Tyson. That's the first Clemson bucket in over three minutes. Good set play, but again, going down inside. Henderson loses, but he's fouled. And any player playing in this game tonight ought to realize the game is going to be called very closely on the dribble. So no sense reaching in. Excellent play by Campbell. On over to Tyson, who makes the backdoor cut. High percentage shot right there. Talk about percentage. Clemson holding people down under 39% field goal shooting percentage because you don't get a lot of easy ones against their big people inside. Henderson, yes. Henderson hasn't touched the rim tonight. He's got six points. See, as Hurley's hand checking out there, Cash has got to make that cost him with the officials a little bit. He never has his hands off him, and yet hasn't gotten a call. Tyson has a good idea, gets it over to Campbell, and he scores. Campbell. That's Campbell's fourth point of the night. Cuts the lead to five. Cash just takes that and knocks it four rows up. Pretty good move by Hurley, though, taking it on inside. He knew he had good rebounding position in there. Kirkland Howling comes in for Clemson and Forrest will sit down. There's no question about this guy's talent. The young freshman Hurley, all kinds of talent, but he has been inconsistent. This foul, this call against who? Kirkland Howling? Howling is first. Yeah, coming across, Henderson already in the act of shooting. And there's a big difference between these two clubs, it's at the free throw line. Clemson shooting under 60% as a team. And Duke shooting above 75%. So if you get in a close ball game, it can really cost you. And you're looking at Henderson, who's a 77% free throw shooter. Almost left Duke, high school All-American, University of Park, Illinois. Philosophy major. And everybody who's watching, Billy's going to say we jinxed him. He was supposed to miss two out of ten if he's shooting under 80, right? That's right. So he gets this one. Seven points for Henderson. He's off to a quick start, and it's a six-point Duke lead. Nice pass to Howling. And of course, Duke trying to do a good job up front on that press. The Clemson countering by using their big guys to bring the ball in bounds and make that first pass. Solid idea 
of poor execution, and now they're going to call the foul against Clemson. That's going to be another one on Davis. He's been in the wrong place at the wrong time twice. That's two on Davis, and it puts Clemson over the limit. So from now on in, he'll be shooting one-on-one. -on -one. This, of course, is in the act of shooting. You can see the ball bounces everywhere. Davis is just kind of standing around, minding his own business, and there is Abdelnabi picking up the loose ball, draws the foul. Number 42, Abdelnabi is a 78% free throw shooter. Everybody's all American at Bloomfield High School. Mr. Basketball in the state of New Jersey. Buckingham takes Davis's place. Buckingham came to the Clemson scene with a great deal of promise. And I'm sure before he gets out of there with a little more experience, he's going to be one of the tougher rebounders in the league. Certainly has the physical attributes to be about whatever he wants. He was the top high school senior in the state of Georgia last year, wasn't he? And played very well in a lot of postseason action. Abdul Nabi hits him. He'll take a seat now. And Hill will come into the ball game. Thomas Hill, another freshman out of Lancaster, Texas. And you notice the fans applauding very well with for Hill and Davis. Both played well in recent outings. And again, the Duke may really get a blessing in disguise with Ricky being down because it's really allowed them to lengthen their bench. Talk about them playing well. There's a whistle and a foul. Philly, did you see the team that Duke went with down the stretch against Georgia Tech? The last eight minutes, Coach K went with Hurley, Thomas Hill, two freshmen, Leitner and Brian Davis, two sophomores, and of course Henderson, the senior. Well, as I said, uh, you know, that could have been uh, the making or breaking of their season. Bricky goes down, and he was playing the best ball of his career. The guy you can count on for explosive offensive and work, and he knows the defense so well. And everybody comes in and picks up the slack. Kubek and the two you just mentioned. Tyson on the baseline gives it up. Nice pass inside and the conversion. Cliff Ellis would love to see that young man get off to a good start in this game. Buckingham was all by himself, so he missed the first one and got his rebound and took it back up. 18-14. Nice pass to Leitner, knocked out by Campbell. Good idea. The difference there being the fact that Leitner was less than halfway up the lane, so there wasn't a lot of room to get that pass in before it would uh, head to the, either the backboard or out of bounds, allowing Campbell to get a piece of it. Kubek gets it back. It looks as if Duke has been dominating. Then you look at the scoreboard, they only lead by four. Hurley, air ball. Leitner loses it out of bounds. Last touched by Buckingham. So with 11.55 remaining in the first half, it's Duke 18, Clemson 14. And we'll be back. Tim, this is what I was talking about in regard to positioning for that lob. Now, Christian Leitner, as opposed to being way up the lane, as we saw Campbell and Leitner earlier in the game, is down below the halfway mark, allows Campbell to have enough room to stay with him and block that attempted lob. Look at this. Jimmy NC Valvano. State big, huh? Jimmy Valvano's team, I was listening to that game on the way over, and they started out like a house of fire in regard to the accuracy shooting standpoint. And Virginia ranked right behind Clemson in field goal percentage defense, so they took it to him early on. Henderson on the baseline takes it in with the big guys, follows his own shot and scores. He now has nine. But there again, Campbell was in position to make sure Henderson doesn't get that shot off and just kind of coasted his way through. Clemson's been working the ball down low, as Billy's told you. Twelve of their points have come in the paint. Duke has only eight. I'll tell you, the way the refs are calling this game, I think if you've got the dribble, try to make the penetration move because they're touching. Any, anytime there's a hand check, any kind of touch by the defense, the refs are blowing a whistle. So you might as well use that to your advantage as an offensive player. Tyson falling away, tries to bank it in. Great follow inside by Buckingham. Don't forget, during halftime, we'll have the Mazda game summary. We'll look at first period action. And Hurley will know not to get in Buckingham's way on the way back down court. He gave him the forearm. Nice pass. Buckingham takes it away. And you notice how Clemson's trying to keep this game into a half-court affair, which is very smart. They're basically taking the crowd out of the game, and they're getting the ball down inside. Trail by four. Under 11 minutes to play. First half, Howling takes it in. Nice help by Kubek. 
fouling loses out of bounds. It'll be Duke basketball. Abdul Nabi will come back into the game. Kubek will sit down. Tim, you notice when the Clemson players are penetrating, the big guys are standing still instead of moving to an open spot so there can be a nice pass given off on the inside or at least get in the rebounding position. Brian Davis also came into the ball game on that exchange. Double low offense by Duke. Setting screens inside a little two-man game for Albonavi and Leighton. Duke loses it out of bounds. So far, Buckingham having a good game on both ends of the floor. Good solid positioning on defense that time. Took away the passing lane to Albonavi. Third turnover for Duke. Buckingham and Abdul Nabi really bumping and grinding down low. Tyson top of the key working on Henderson. Got a switch. Buckingham ought to take Henderson down inside. Dangerous pass out to Cash. Howling double team loses it. This is Hurley. Uncontested. Boy, he plays some defense, doesn't he? Both Henderson and Hurley did a good job on the double team. Clemson players coming to the ball. Good time to backdoor a man if you're going to get allow a double team on the man with the ball. 22-16 Duke. See Tyson again doesn't backdoor. Takes his man right over to where the ball is. That causes a problem. He got by with that time. Tyson right down that baseline. Now has four points. Tyson playing pretty aggressively in the offensive end. Got that big upper body. I'll tell you the truth. I think Cliff Ellis is looking for anybody right now that's going to play aggressively. He wants his team to be more aggressive. They're very much in the hunt in the ACC. Abdunabe, nice spin move. Campbell was last to touch it. It'll be Duke basketball. Number 13, Derek Forrest, back for the Tigers. And Joe Cook, this is Tyson, of course, sat out last year. He had that surgery problem. Gall bladder. He looks very healthy now and playing a good game so far. So Cliff Ellis getting nice play off the bench by Buckingham and Tyson so far. Barr is back in for Howling. Cook in the ball game for Duke. Henderson misses for three. Off the front of the rim. Rebound Buckingham. Oh, is he strong? Such a solid screen. Buckingham sets a halfway screen. Could have really picked off Cook that time. You know, Billy, you watch Buckingham, he doesn't move like a 6'9 guy. Moves like he's 6'6, 6 6'5. 6 this is Campbell. Oh, so soft Elvin. to touch inside. He's now got six points, and it's 22 20. They cut the lead to two. Nice move by Leitner. Good help by Buckingham. Campbell just not set for that move. Christian Leitner's got the good, quick first step for a man 6'10 or 11. Goes right by Campbell. Campbell not in position. Buckingham does a good job coming over there. He's going to foul a man in that position. Make sure he doesn't get the shot off. Only his first. Leitner at the line. And what this is allowing, Buckingham's play, I'm speaking of, is allowing Davis to get a little breather here, not get any further foul trouble. Had two quick, cheap fouls early on. Leitner. Ranks first in the Atlantic Coast Conference in free throws. He's 86% from the line, now has five points. Goes to the line more than anybody else in the league, and he's the team best and the league best. Makes the second one, 24 to 20, Duke. And when you talk about Leitner's stats in the league, he's in the top 10 in every front line category that there is. Well, his worst statistic, he's ninth in scoring. That's not bad. That's right. This foul's on Abdul Nabi. That's his first. The free throw percentage leader, as you mentioned. And rebounding, he's number two in the league behind Davis. Ninth in scoring. Sixth in field goal shooting percentage. I mean, he's up there having just a very solid year. Billy Clay Buckley now comes into the lineup. You know what I think, uh, Tim? I think Mike Krzyzewski feels it's very warm in here tonight. I think he feels that this play this first half try to wear down Clemson. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't hear a little bit about Davis's flu. Well, Ellis now puts Davis back into the lineup after a little breather on the bench. Campbell goes out, and Tyson misses the free throw. 
And a lot of coaches don't like to put a guy back in at this time, eight minutes to go with two fouls. Try to keep him off the bench as long as you can keep it close and have the three fouls to use in the second half. Davis has got to be careful. You mentioned Clemson's not a good free throw shooting team, and in this building, you really have to concentrate. The Duke students are the best coming up with those <laughs> no. various moves to throw you off. No question about it. Here's the steal. Got a little bit too fancy as he came to the basket, and Buckley just takes Tyson's shot and puts it five rows up. Timmy, uh, in a situation, now watch this steal. If Tyson goes to Buckley and cuts him off, as opposed to giving Buckley the angle for the block, he has a chance to throw the big guy off stride, but when he gives him the angle for the block, the advantage becomes Buckley's. So Buckley's charged with a foul. Tyson goes to the line, and he'll be shooting two. He's got five points. Kind of the opposite of a running back. He wants to stay away from the tackler. In this particular case, it's a man can't tackle. Dribble at him, get him on your back, and then explode to the basket. Here's a guy, Billy, in his spare time, he's an amateur barber. Cuts the hair of all the guys. In his spare time, he should be working on those free throws. How does he get the back of his head done? <laughs> time out. Very, very carefully. Eight minutes remain in the first half. It's Duke by two. Now this word from our good friends at Natural Light. Tim Clemson, one of the best rebounding teams in the league out-rebounding their opponents by seven a game. Now watch this block out. Everybody found a man. Tyson Campbell allows Buckingham to come right in who had Abdul Nabi on his back. You can't do it any better than that. Three men on the ball, super block out. Here's a guy, Buckingham, who scored only six points in the last three games. Tonight he has four points already along with three rebounds. It's a two-point Duke lead. Eight minutes remaining in the first half. Tim Brant and Billy Packer with you at Cameron Indoor Stadium, and it's jammed. Well, we talked about that Mazda game plan, keeping the game close, let your big guys get involved, take the crowd out of the game. Clemson's been able to do it all. Anderson for three. He now has 12 points. No place to go. Cash dribbled into trouble, and it's Duke's basketball. You had a little indecision by the officials there. One official called walk, and I think the other official was going to call a foul. And I don't think he was walking. It was an unusual step with his right foot, but he still kept the pivot foot solid. I think the whistle blew, and he had to come up with something. Oh, nice steal. That's four turnovers now for Duke. Tyson from 15. Push off. That's Davis' third. He's got to come out. He just hasn't gotten in this game. And that was the gamble Cliff Ellis took. He brought him in with about 8-10. He got in about less than a minute's worth of playing time before he picked up his third. Tyson kind of pinched that one off. There was the push off before the rebound. Got to believe that the flu bug is ailing him tonight. He's usually the most consistent of that front court for Clemson. Well, if you spell flu, F-O-U-L, I would agree with you. <laughs> that is how you spell foul, isn't it? Because he's got three and hasn't been a factor. Might as well put those points on the board. He's like gold at the line. Saw Brian Stith. You talk about a guy that uh, puts him in automatically last weekend against Wake Forest. Great free throw shooter for a front court player. For anyone, for that matter. Duke now seven for eight at the line. It's 29-22. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Raycom Sports and an entertainment and JP Sports. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of Raycom and JP Sports is prohibited. Tyson with the bucket inside. Really exploding um, inside. And if people are going to guard you that closely, as he did the smart thing, little ball fake, go right on by. Clemson just hanging in there. 29-24, Duke. Henderson, tough shot. Big rebound by Buckingham. He's playing well. He's got four rebounds now. You know, the way Buckingham's playing now, you can see Cliff Ellis in time going to the three big fellas. Nice pass. Forrest can't convert it, but there is a foul against Duke. 
The cash is funny. In traffic, he dribbles with his head down. Watch this right here. He has his head down. Tough to see the play down there. Buckley comes over. The second time he's got his hands on the ball. This time gets called for the foul. Last time in a good block. Buckley second foul. He'll sit down. Kubek, Alban, Abelnavi, Hurley. McCaffrey in the lineup now for Duke. And Forrest at the line. But despite their high ranking, when you look at this Duke club, particularly with Ricky, Ricky down now, it's a, still a very young team. Abelnavi, the only senior on the floor right now. Derek Forrest, the only married player for Clemson. His wife plays on the Clemson women's team. He's only a 45% free throw shooter, but looked good on those two. Young back in the game. Tyson and Buckingham replaced two starters. Let's just stand right in that man to man. Same play as before. Pick and roll. Duke gets by twice. And the foul on Buckingham. Leitner may have overpassed on that play. I think Coach K wants him to take those jumpers. He's that close to the bucket, uncontested, just should put it in. Well, the last time this play went to an immediate layup, you notice there, Campbell stays with his man. I don't know, Tim. If, if Abdelnabi put it right back up on the other side of the basket, might have had an easy layup. Good look by Leitner. You never uh, can holler at a guy who's trying to hit a teammate a little closer to the basket. He was open, too, for the jumper, but Abdelnabi would have had a two-foot layup. Abdul Nabi bangs that one in. He's now got five points. Clemson has to decide on that particular maneuver. Are they going to switch? Are they going to double team? Or are they going to fight their way through the screen? They haven't done either. This is the second one, and Campbell loses it out of bounds for Clemson. I want to welcome those of you that have been elsewhere watching the President's State of the Union. This is Cameron Indoor Stadium. Tim Brandt, Good Billy Beck, and Leitner inside can't score, but Abdul Nabi puts it up and it is fouled. We've got a 30-26 ball game. The Blue Devils on top. 6-10 remaining first half. It's been a good ball game thus far. And Tim, there's where those three fouls on Davis really hurt Clemson because very seldom on the offensive board with both Davis and Campbell in the game do you get three putbacks. Although Buckingham has done a good job since he's been in there, not exactly the same as Dale Davis. Abdul Nabi hits this one. 78% free throw shooter. He's on target to break Duke's all-time field goal percentage record. Not a bad free throw shooter as well, as we just told you. Political science major. the second one. It's 32-26. Abu Nabi now with seven points. And to put some things in perspective, Steve Scheffler up at Purdue, I believe, is leading the nation at roughly 74% from the field. Abu Nabi having a great year at 64. And there's Buckingham again. Where has he been? Great move on the baseline, and he slams it down. He's now got six points and cuts the lead back to four. He's going to be seeing more action. No oh, question about that. that. There's the same maneuver. Solid screen by Leitner and allows Hurley to get an easy jumper. Duke gets it back over to McCaffrey. McCaffrey will fire on the run and hit. Cliff Ellis hot, but nobody blocking out. Press has been somewhat ineffective for Duke, and they haven't been able to force Temple out of the press. But now they're starting to get towards a little working margin. This is a very important possession for uh, Clemson. Leitner helping out on a weak side. Good play by Leighton. Another turnover by Clemson, but the Tigers get it right back on the floor, and Duke has it. Abdul Nabi to Hurley. Two on one. Abdul Nabi, yes! Time out for Clemson here. Good move by Cliff Ellis. He can see a run coming. Duke just out-hustled Clemson on that occasion. This place is rocking. 4.59 remaining in the half. This year, one airline will pass all the others. We'll have 70,000 more departures than Delta. We'll have 120,000 more departures than American. We'll have 400,000 more departures than United. In fact, this year, U.S. Air will have more departures than any other airline in the free world. So if we sound like an airline that's really taking off, you don't know how right you are. 
U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. Hello tomorrow, goodbye yesterday. You can feel the emotion, we're breaking away. A generation of life, we have our own voice. A generation of taste, and Pepsi's our choice. We're leading the way, now let it be said. A generation of Pepsi, a generation of Brought to you by Unical. Since 1951, we fueled more NASCAR winners than all of the gasolines combined. And we put that same high performance and winning spirit into gasolines for your car. What'd you say we take her for a spin, Murph? Rich. It's 36-28 with 4.59 remaining in the first half. Tim, I talked about an important possession here. Clemson just doesn't stick their nose down the floor to get it. Tyson makes the good job, but watch this. As the ball goes loose, two players from Clemson just reach for it. You've got to go down on the floor and make sure that ball, at worst, is turned over to the arrows, but that you certainly have a chance for possession. As they reach, Abdul Nabi came right in, scooped it up, and Hurley makes the good play. 30 seconds ago, it was a two-point Duke lead. Now it's 36-28, Blue Devils. Duke really forces you to make some backdoor cuts, and so far, Clemson hasn't been doing it. No foul call. I don't know how there was no call on that, but it will be Clemson basketball. Well, Abdul Nabi, from a standpoint of effort and concentration, here in his senior year is uh, completely 180 degrees from where he was when he came into Duke. He really has become a solid player for him. Always had the talent. Cash inside, followed by Campbell, but there's a foul before the bucket. Offensive rebounds, Clemson's been just having one shot per trip. Duke leads 10 rebounds to three offensively. Excellent set play by Clemson to come right off the screen. That'll be his second foul. That's seven team fouls now. Two shots. This Clemson club, until they walked into North Carolina, had eight wins in a row. But they have never, and this is, it's hard to believe, it's kind of like that Virginia streak in football down at Clemson. Then never to have won a basketball game in Chapel Hill in the league is hard to believe. Never in Chapel Hill. They're 3-39 and 39 here in Durham and 6-39 and 39 at NC State. And there's a Buckingham move. He steps into the lane. Clemson is just rattled. Nine turnovers for Clemson. You see everybody getting ready, and Buckingham steps in. I, uh, he was looking straight ahead and didn't see whether this ball had been released. Henderson for three. Off the back of the iron, fight for the rebound. Campbell almost loses it. Cash has got to be smart. Moves it quick guys Campbell. Game. Campbell hits tough jump shot. Oh, soft touch. There's not a softer touch by a big man in the country than Campbell. He now has eight points, Billy. McCaffrey shot around the rim and falls out. Looks like Clemson will make a run here. Nice pass to Tyson. Nobody blocks out and he gets a second chance. Well, just in this case, Leitner kind of fell asleep. You've always got to see the ball in your man. He turned his head, and the ball went right over his shoulder. Billy, he now has 10 points, and it cuts the lead back to four. Well, we talked about somebody coming off that bench to give Clemson a lift, as have been the players from Duke. Nice and they're look. getting it. That foul will be against Buckingham, is it? Yes. That's his second. When you talk about backdoor cuts, Bobby Hurley using his head going back door behind the defense you can see there's all the defense trying to overplay Hurley just takes him back door makes a great dish to Abdul Nabi after the foul Abdul Nabi did dunk it it won't count here's a first team high school All-American at St. Anthony's High School played with Terry DeHur who's now at Seton Hall DeHair rather and Hurley bangs this one in 
Early is first in assists in the conference games. Kenny Anderson second. 79% free throw shooter, and he now has six points. I saw DeHare play when Seton Hall played Pitt. That must have been some basketball team. Well, he's averaging right up around 20 points a game. <laughs> Playing with a very young team at Seton Hall, so obviously having a great freshman year. 38-32 now, Duke. Whoa, Cash almost gets in trouble. Again, nobody going back door. Nice pass inside the Cash. Buckingham shot around the rim, falls out. Campbell fights for the rebound, and Duke loses it out of bounds. Earl is going to check to see if he has all his teeth. Campbell did a good job battling for the rebound that time. Buckingham with the wide open shot. Here's the wide open shot. Stays with it pretty well. Look at Campbell banging right in there to get his hands on the ball. Good job. There was the back door cut, but nobody holding up on the dribble. Could be a huge upset there, Johnny Orr at Iowa State. We're told only two minutes remain in that ball game. Tough place to play. I'd say that about a lot of sports, <laughs> I guess, when you go away from home. But considering their ability as a team, it's like Kansas State. It's not a kind of place you want to go to come up with an easy victory. This is one of the all-time great places right here, inside the Leighton. And Hurley will fire for three points and hit it. Hurley now with 10. Tyson, tough shot. Not the, off shot. The... Not the shot you want. Buckingham on a push again. Not the shot you want. And Tim, just when Clemson gets themselves in a position to do something, instead of getting away, getting back to going inside, take a bad shot, allows Duke to really widen this margin. And again, we talk about the outstanding free throw shooting team, and Duke has been on there often in this first half. Duke with its biggest lead, 41-32. And Kubek at the line. And of course, Buckingham's third brings a real problem because Dale Davis already on the bench with three. And if Billy Cliff, if Cliff Ellis has to go to a small club, he's got real problems here. If you were going to foul a guy on Duke's team, you would think this would be the guy. He was 18 for 26 coming into the game, and he misses this one. Picks up his dribble, does get it to Campbell. Campbell is fouled by Leitner. And where did that play come from? I mean, use it until uh, Duke figures out a way to stop it. He sure had success early on with it. That's a walk. Campbell moved both feet before he put the ball down. He does that a yes, lot. He does. Matter of fact, he was called early in the game. But it's a pretty good way if you can do it to fake out your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Clemson just three for six from the line tonight. And Campbell hits this one. Conversely, Duke on the other end, 13 for 16 at the line. Campbell now in double figures. He's got 10. That's 29 straight ACC games. He's hit double figures. Well, he needs two more assists to uh, really set some kind of a record and having over 100 assists, blocks, and steals for a big man. Henderson puts up his second air ball of the game. That gives it back to Clemson. This is Forrest. Again, it's time to get the ball back into Campbell's hands. Just keep working it around until you get that opportunity. Forrest pushes it in the paint, has the short jumper, and pulls the string on it. Did you notice where Campbell was when that shot was taken? About 20 feet away from the basket. Nice pass by Hurley back to Henderson. The lead is 10. And if you're Cliff Ellis, you have to wonder. I mean, the team played very well. Just about all of this first half find themselves 10 down. 
see the game is being called so close. Just keep going inside to Campbell. That's the second on Leitner. Mike Krzyzewski has done a good job in the first half using a lot of people, so he doesn't have anybody in real serious foul trouble. And with just 1.14 to go, I think it, he's probably going to take Leitner out right now. You're right. He yeah, has good done move. a fine job, and he's taking him out. Sure. Don't want him to pick up the third and 1.14. You're up 10. So Leitner comes out. Clay Buckley, the 6'10 junior, comes back in. He's from Wayne, Pennsylvania. No, it's subtle moves like that that make a guy an outstanding coach. You just don't make the mistake to say, hey, I forgot to make the change. Now down court, Leitner runs into somebody, picks up his third. Just can't let those kind of things happen. Campbell hits his 11th point. You know, it's interesting. You see a young guy like Coach K come to Duke. Wins 17, I guess, with Banks his first year, but then has some hard times and wins 10, wins 11 the next two years. People started to get down on him a little bit, and all of a sudden he's in the Final Four almost every year now, it seems. Well, you have to credit Tom Butters with that, just having the patience to stay with a guy who he knew could do the job. And the foul outside. The foul is going to be against Tyson. I think it's going to be against Campbell, and it's one of those where the second push was caught by the officials. Campbell upset with it. No, it's on Tyson. Oh, That's his first. Well, Campbell got pushed. He's uh, kind of annoyed in there. You know, I think it's good when Campbell gets annoyed. Oh, no question. Matter of fact, I'd be pushing him around in the locker room before he, right, He's the kind of guy that, you know, you lock in the locker room for a while. <laughs> Just don't let him get out the door. Let him get all fired up, then come out and play. Buckley hits the first. Short That's his first is, point, Billy. Your short sheet is dead. You do everything you can. You know, tell him the food was cold. Just get him annoyed at the world. Keep him angry all the time. And next year, he'll be moving into the NBA, and he'll have to change his sock size. You know why? Why? He, he doesn't wear them. I mean, and in the NBA, they just passed the rule. Everybody has to wear standard size socks now, so he'll have to get used to it. The lead is 10. It's an important trip for Clemson. And that's all they've got to do is keep going down there. And Tyson could have got called with a T. Probably should have for hanging on the rim. That's Buckley's third personal, and Campbell will go to the line. Well, you can see what Campbell is doing to Duke if they'll just give him the ball inside. You've got Leitner in trouble. Buckley, who they can afford to lose. There's Tyson. Not any need to protect himself for hanging on the rim there. So. Referees were kind of lenient. Here's a guy, Eldon Campbell, was a preseason second team All-American, ringing that one around. All City High School player out of Los Angeles. He's a 56% free throw shooter. He's got 12 points here in this ball game, and he makes the second one. This past summer, touring with the NIT people to show what he can do on the national level. He was the leading scorer on their tour of Europe. And here Duke pulls it out above the foul line, making sure there's no help. You see the time remaining in the half. Exactly 25 seconds. And they're going to have to give up the ball, obviously, but now they put it into a 1-4 with Hurley looking to make some kind of penetration. They set the pick on the left side for Henderson. Tough shot off balance, but he's fouled. Oh, that's not a smart foul at all. He had a tough shot, Billy. Just hold your ground as a defender. Duke sets that up well. Matter of fact, they execute that 1-4 as well as anybody I've seen this year, working it down to the clock. The reason for that, a guy like Hurley really is tough to handle out, out in the top of the key all by himself. Boy, that'll drive that guy nuts. That's the third on Forrest. And Tim, I was, I was looking at, at home today at the point guard situation in the league, you know, in regard to statistically how the Rices and, and the Kenny Andersons, Hurley, Corsiani, uh, it, just a great year for guys at that position. It's interesting. Rice and Hurley, nine points apiece, 9-5. Steals, 33 to 29. Assists, 129, 51 turnovers. The other guy, 143-84. Both shooting 38% from the floor. Very similar in what they've been doing for their clubs. Both uh, aggressive defensively, uh, put a lot of pressure. 
The guy that's off the board at that position is Kenny Anderson. I mean, he's averaging 21 a game, 39 steals, 137 assists, shooting 55 percent. It's very rare to see Henderson miss two in a row at the line like that, but Duke will get it back with nine seconds left, and they'll set that last shot. Well, you've got the ball in Hurley's hands. Mike Krzyzewski coming back with McCaffrey, his shooter. So he's really got Henderson, Kubak, McCaffrey, and Hurley out there as shooters. Now he's, now he's taking Henderson out. So you figure they want to get the ball in, in Hurley's hands. Let him make some kind of penetration move. Nine-point lead by the Blue Devils. Good penetration oh, by Davis. Move. And that'll end the half. How do you like it? Excellent one-on-one -on -one move. Duke trying to get the ball to Hurley. Can't do it. And this almost looked like Robert Bricky from the sidelines. Great move. Nobody moving over to play body position on the driver. Just the reach. Watch as, as the drive takes place. Everybody reaching. Nobody putting a body out there. Tyson just reached over. Made it kind of easy for Davis to lay it up. After Henderson missed the two, it still pays for Duke. 48-37 Devils. And now a word from our good friends at Budweiser. Tonight's ACC action is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, Buick, True Value Hardware, U.S. Air, and by Budweiser. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. January 28th. This time, it's war. Did you know if you're an MCI Executinet or a Sprint Dial 1 customer and your business spends over $50 a month, you could be in the wrong plan. You can save money with the new AT&T Pro Watts, and we're going to make it easy. We're so sure that you'll see the difference. We'll pay to sign you up. We'll pay to switch you over. And if you're not satisfied within 90 days, we'll even pay to switch you back. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-222-0400. New AT&T Pro Watts, another AT&T advantage. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car company offers you a choice of some of the most trouble-free cars you can own. That American car company is Buick. And the 1990 versions of those American cars are Buick LeSabre, Buick Riviera, and Buick Electra Park Avenue. Cash in on quality now during Buick's Great American Quality Days. If your light bulb burns out, your dimmer won't dim, or your extension cord's gone bad, then it's time for a quick trip to Lowe's, because Lowe's has everything you need to fix anything you have that has anything to do with your home, period. So why don't you fix it? For whatever you need to maintain your home, we have it all at Lowe's. Just fix it. Halftime here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke leading Clemson 48 to 37. Henderson with 14 points leads Duke. Campbell with 13 leads Clemson. Been an interesting first half, Billy. Tim Brandt along with Billy Packer and that Clemson hung tough. It looked like Duke was going to blow them out there for a while. They stayed, they stayed, and then right at the end, Duke made a run. Yeah, if you're Cliff Ellis and you sit in the locker room right now and you, and you look at that stat sheet and you say, you know, guys, we're supposed to be down four, not 11. Finds, finds Duke in a situation right now where they can come out the second half, try to explode and, and, and shoot it right to a 20-point lead right off the bat. So I think Clemson has to be satisfied with the way they played, but not their concentration going down the wire. Well, Davis went out of the ball game with seven minutes remaining in the half. He did not return. He's suffering with the flu. The Mazda game summary is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. It just feels right. Uh, uh, Tim, some of the things that, that happened in the first half that, that I thought were interesting, 
Clemson came down in this sequence, and here was one of the major turning points in the game. They need to get a good shot. Tyson made the steal and then tried to go for the kill. The ball goes off, and you can see Buckingham and Campbell just reach for the ball instead of diving down on it. Abdel Nabi makes a good play to Hurley, back to Abdel Nabi for the layup, and this is where Duke started to get that working margin. Now, Buckingham came off the bench. Dale Davis, who is suffering from the flu, but more importantly has three fouls on him in the first half and didn't do much. But Buckingham came in and really had some solid play. Six points, six rebounds for Buckingham. He plays well along with Tyson, who comes off the bench and scores ten points. Tyson was very explosive, uh, particularly taking the ball to the basket. Judgment-wise, uh, he tried to do a little bit too much down the wire, but good solid play by both of those performers off the bench. Turnovers and free throws have really hurt the Tigers in the first half. They have. It's been a problem for them all year long. We can remember back early on when they played in the league contest the first one of the year at NC State. They just couldn't get in sync in the backcourt. They're the kind of team that doesn't want to run, particularly not in this particular gymnasium, but they do have to start getting the ball to Campbell and make him the force that he can be. Billy, how much of a factor do you think it is to come into a building like this? And I want to tell you something. It's hot in here. I'm perspiring like crazy and we're way up near the roof but you have Dale Davis he's suffering from the flu you football players too <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's good to sweat though <laughs> uh, well I, I think that we saw early on you know it's it's warm here uh, in North Carolina obviously and in a gym like this is going to be a little warmer than usual and then you get all the fans in here to heat it up and I think Mike Krzyzewski uh, and his experience in this gymnasium uh, played well for him early on in the ball game because he started to substitute very liberally right off the bat. I mean, he went to guys on the bench in the first couple of minutes, particularly his big people, and uh, and it was wise because everybody he has is fresh and out of foul trouble. Very quickly, what does Clemson have to do to get back in this thing? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is really protect the ball at the start of the second half. Try to get by the first two or three minutes without Duke making a run. And even if that means slowing down a little bit and being even more uh, passive in what they're trying to do, getting that ball inside, because they can't afford to turn it over early on in that second half. 48-37 Duke, and we'll return after this message from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball and Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports will continue after these messages from your local ACC stations. <laughs> I'm, uh, I think it would uh, suffice it to say what I've been through. I'm uh, interested in uh, uh, working with my basketball team right here. You know, uh, Does anyone contact you about the point of no, just, a, just a call for the President of the United States today about our, our shooting, but uh, no one from the no. Yeah.
fans, just a reminder to pick up your ballots and vote for your choice of the Pepsi's best of the ACC. Tonight, we focus our attention on the high-jumping senior from Duke, Robert Bricky, the Devils most athletic player. He tallied almost 40% of his field goals on dunks. Although he is currently injured, the political science major is helping the club with his leadership, and Duke now sits on top of the ACC. Remember, ballots are available at Pepsi Diet Pepsi Displays, and we'll be announcing the fans' choice during the 1990 ACC tournament. In the ACC, the best player has the right touch, the right moves, the right shots. Who's the best? Vote in the Pepsi Diet Pepsi Best of the ACC Sweepstakes. Pick up a ballot at any Pepsi display, and you could win two tickets and a trip to next year's ACC tournament. Or a 1990 Pontiac Grand Prix. Vote for the right one in the Pepsi Diet Pepsi Best of the ACC Sweepstakes. Time now for the Budweiser scoreboard. We'll show you some of the scores. Last time we looked, Missouri was down by two, but they came back and won it. How about NC State up top, 84-58. That now a final. LSU over Ole Miss, 79-77, Billy. And Tennessee beat Vanderbilt by one. SEC is wild. Kentucky hanging in there, only, what, a half a game behind the leaders. Georgia with a win over Auburn tonight. And there's the score we were telling you about. Missouri came back to beat Iowa State 95-43. How about 95-93? 95-93. What'd I say? 43. <laughs> <laughs> we're having fun I told up you here it was close. <laughs> <laughs> there's Kansas 41, Colorado 24. That's in the first half. And Arkansas beating Rice 50-44. Rice making a nice uh, run in the Southwest Conference. They've been down for so long. Arkansas, one of the finest clubs in the country. Here in Cameron Indoor Stadium, 48-37, and there's a heat wave in Durham. <laughs> there certainly is, and I bet you there's a heat wave in that Clemson locker room as well as Cliff Ellis probably trying to get that attention of his team that played well, but not well enough to take it down the wire. Here's what we were telling you about. Clemson very much in the hunt now in the Atlantic Coast Conference with a 4-2 and two conference record, but they need a win on the road because Duke has already gotten two big wins on the road, one over Georgia Tech, one over State, and they're 6-1, and one, Carolina with 5-1. and one. This should be some tournament this year, Billy. I mean, you look at all the teams. All the teams are competitive with the exception right now of Wake Forest, which is struggling. And, of course, another little factor in the tournament, NC State not eligible to go in the NCAA tournament. So those fellows come in with the added incentive, knowing the only thing they can play for is the conference championship. Well, Hurley has accounted for 10.6 assists. As you look at the score, 48-37 Duke at half. Right now, U.S. Air is offering low fares on some very special seats. Seats in the warm sunshine of Florida, California, Arizona, Puerto Rico, and the Bahamas. So if you're planning a vacation this year, all you have to do to reserve any one of these seats is call us and reserve one of ours. Years ago, it seemed there was always someone you could really trust to take good care of your car. Well, there still is. And for over 75 years now, folks all over have been turning to Unical for friendly, trustworthy service that's second to none. Hi, Henry. Hi, Murph. You know, the older she gets, the better she looks. My boys are eight and nine. They're great kids, but it isn't easy raising them single-handed. The guys at work say, let's go here, let's do this. And I say, I can't. I got mildew stains. I got a hot dog casserole in the oven. You see, I'm all the boys have now, and, and sometimes I think, what if something happens to me? Sure, it's tough at times, but worth it. It's just that once I'd like to go eat somewhere without plastic forks and cartoon cups. Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. Did you know if you're an MCI Executive or a Sprint Dial 1 customer and your business spends over $50 a month, you could be in the wrong plan. You can save money with the new AT&T Pro Watts, and we're going to make it easy. We're so sure that you'll see the difference. We'll pay to sign you up. We'll pay to switch you over. And if you're not satisfied within 90 days, we'll even pay to switch you back. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-222-0400. New AT&T Pro Watts, another AT&T advantage. 
Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Infinity, Holly Farms, Lowe's, and by Mazda. Stay tuned for the Holly Farms Players of the Game Award brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of fresh chicken. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference approved plan. That's the Holly Farms Players of the Game to be awarded near the conclusion of our broadcast. Big news in the NBA today. Dick Harder was fired as the coach of the Hornets. They were out in San Antonio. And obviously the question in this part of the country becomes, how about Jim Valvano? Well, State beat Virginia tonight. And after that game, Jim Valvano was asked if he was interested in the job of the Charlotte Hornets. I'm, uh, I think it would uh, suffice it to say what I've been through. I'm uh, interested in, uh, uh, working with my basketball team right here. You know, uh, Did anyone contact you? What do you think about that, Billy? Well, how about Terry Holland? They didn't ask him the question, and he's uh, going down towards Charlotte, maybe uh, as a part-time assistant, uh, as an athletic director at Davidson, to coach the Hornets on the side. <laughs> a good guy got the job, uh, in the, even if his interim, Gene Littles, who's worked a long time and served his apprenticeship well in the NBA. He's been on the road. He knows the league, and, and I wish him well. It's a shame that Dick Harder wasn't given more time. Uh, here's a man that also served an apprenticeship, obviously an outstanding coach, was in the collegiate level, took Penn to the Final Four, great coach out in the West Coast, came back to Penn State. Knows the game, tutored under uh, Chuck Daly at Detroit. I think it was said, Billy, the owners weren't concerned as much about the record as they were about his inability to motivate the team is what they the Tough to motivate years. when you've only won eight games. <laughs> no question about it. U.S. Air halftime stats are brought to you by U.S. Air. Well, you can see field goal percentage-wise, uh, Clemson way up there. You know, I, I'm really kind of shocked that Duke only shooting 42%, but they went to the line 20 times. And that's a big thing. You can see the rebounds, turnovers, a big factor for Clemson, particularly when they're trying to play a slowdown game to turn it over 10 times is way too many if you're a, a Clemson fan and if you're Cliff Ellis trying to diagram for your players what you want. Get the ball down inside. Don't make the game quite so complicated. Tyson and Campbell have combined to score 23 of Clemson's 37 points. High score, of course, Henderson for Duke. He has 14. It's 48-37 as we start the second half. Tim Brant and Billy Packer with you. This is Campbell inside. He's fouled right away by Leitner. Now, I thought that was a pretty good block by Leitner, but what's happened right here, and we said at the top of the show, everything that's a touch foul is being called a foul. A good double team by Kubek. He comes across. I thought Leitner got a lot of the ball on that one, but it puts Campbell on the line. More importantly, that's three on Leitner. Breon Leitner and Mike Krzyzewski doesn't want to have to go to that bench this early with Leitner, but probably will. Campbell at the line has 13 points. Mike Krzyzewski also wonders why is it a shooting foul? Campbell wasn't really getting up into his motion by the time that ball was hit. A little confab down on the Duke bench to say, what are you going to do about Leitner with two with three fouls at this much to go in the second half. Billy, I've got to believe, unless Clemson starts hitting from the foul line, they will not win this ball game. Well, we talked about that being a huge difference between these two clubs at the start of the game, and it really comes back to haunt you. You get those free stripes, and when you can't convert, it just sends you farther and farther behind. A little skip pass down to Abdul Nabi, and he bounces it off his foot, and Abdul Nabi's going to be called for a foul. Tyson was in pursuit and got fouled from behind. But you notice how Abdul Nabi, although he pushed and committed the foul, he was going down on the floor to get that ball, that play that we pointed out in the first half, where the Clemson players reached. It's a big difference. A little bit of concern now from the fans here in Cameron Indoor Stadium. That's three personals on Ala Abdul Nabi, three against Leitner. All the more reason for Clemson to get that ball down inside. Go to Campbell now. Nobody should shoot the ball until Campbell touches it a few times. There, there he is. is. Abdul Nabi knocks it out of bounds. 
Campbell says, hey, nice pass. That's it. You just keep coming to me. And if you're Davis and you see Abdel Nabi coming over there to try to double team on Campbell, you ought to get yourself positioned right under the basket for the easy dunk. Tigers need that good entry pass now. This is Tyson working the baseline. No place Balls to on go. the floor. And it's knocked out by Tyson. Tyson had success on that baseline in the first half. He keeps trying to go back there. And nobody, nobody paying attention. There's the turnover. Meanwhile, Duke has a turnover at the other end. Clemson brings it back and loses it out of bounds. Tim, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but what Clemson is thinking about, they don't need to be in a fast break game. They've got a situation where they've got Abdul Nabi and Leitner in foul trouble, and they, they shouldn't ever even look for a shot until they go inside. I agree with you. Go right after them. If they're going to win this game, they're going to have to, Billy. That's right. And, and you know, Duke will have to come back with Buckley's or Palmer. They're going to call this one on Campbell. Now for Campbell, that's number two. And it's the first team foul against Clemson this half. 48-37. Sloppy beginning to the second half. 18-30 remaining in the ball game. Duke goes to their box offense, getting good screens inside. Tyson's called for the foul, coming over the top of Kubek. And that's his second. Tyson in a good first half. Exploded in the inside off the dribble. You know, you can't get upset with a guy, though, when he's being aggressive. You just made that point about Abdul Nabi. Another mental mistake. Henderson comes right down the, the lane as Forrest has his back turned. 50-37, Duke. This is Campbell. Out to Kubek, the outlet pass over to Leitner. And they'll set the offense. Hurley up the top of the key. The Duke wanting to push that ball up the court with this kind of lead, good move on their part. Even if you make a mistake in the open court area, you just want to turn this into a sloppy ball game for the next couple of minutes. Cash just trying to make something happen, loses the ball, and then the frustration foul. Cliff Ellis is really frustrated. He's going for the timeout. Try to get his ball club organized. He should. They're old for the second half. 17-36 remaining the ball game, and now a word from our good friends at Budweiser. Here's the last stop on our tour, the Fountain of Youth. This one's on me. How about a nice cold bud, young man? I love this job. Three, two, one. Holly Farms was a chicken. Lick it, it's split. Already cooked, so you can lick it, it's split. Lunch it, munch it, dinner's a hit. Holly Farms was a chicken. Lick it, it's split. Ooh, lick it, it's cold. Lick it, it's hot. Juicy and quick is what you got. Holly Farms was a chicken. Lick it, it's split. Yeah. Did you know, due to overwhelming demand, AT&T has added more time to sign up for our ProWatts offer. And with our lower price, now any business spending $50 or more a month can automatically earn bigger and bigger discounts, making AT&T's prices extremely competitive. And until February 28th, we'll even pay the sign-up fee. So sign up now, before time slips away again. AT&T ProWatts, another AT&T advantage. With just over two and a half minutes gone in the second half, it's 2-0 Duke this half, and it's 50-37 for the game. Clemson, Billy, has not scored a field goal since the 114 mark of the first half. 
skip pass into Leitner. Tries to bank it in, fight for the rebound. Henderson comes away with it. Well, Henderson having an excellent game today. Very quiet, just not making any mistakes. Good lob. Abdul Nabi fouled by Campbell. That'll be his third. So now Campbell has three, Leitner has three, and Abul Nabi has three. And Davis has three. Perfect lob pass. Davis not there quite in time. Got a lot of the ball on that block. Really the key to this ball game, Tim, I think is the next time or two down the floor for Clemson. If they can't get the ball inside, get some type of offense going in the low post, Duke can just stretch this thing out. You talk about Clemson as a ball club on the road, it's interesting stat. 53% they shoot at home and only 46% on the road. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Fight for the rebound. This is Davis inside and he's fouled. And that's the fourth foul on Abdul Nabi. The fourth on Abdul Nabi in a big basket for the Tigers. Davis has only four points, but he goes to the line. Now see, the problem for Mike Krzyzewski, he's wanting to keep both of those big guys out on the floor. Early on, he was he was thinking about wearing down the Clemson front line, but right now he realizes with Clemson having Buckingham to put in there, Clemson can be a lot bigger and more powerful inside if he has to take out Abdel Nabi or Leighton. That was some great activity on the boards there, but Davis misses the free throw. What I think Mike is trying to do right now is to open up a pretty big margin so he can go with the smaller club and spread Clemson out. Shot is short, fight for the rebound, Davis gets it. Inside to Campbell. He walked. He walked. Pretty good idea. Now you can see Clemson likes to go down the sideline on that semi break, but they're not a big three point shooting team. And that's what you'd like to take advantage of if you're going down that sideline. That was the fourth Clemson turnover in the second half. The Tigers have 14 for the game. Hurley, nice drive. Oh, the jump hook. oh how about that? He likes that shot, has a lot of confidence in it. Again, time to go inside. Tyson wide open for the jumper and can't hit it. Clemson's just ice cold. Nice pass to Leitner. Mike Krzyzewski now, do you see what he's done? He's got himself a big enough working margin at 15 points. Now he comes back with Buckley. Really a calculated gamble on his part, and it's because Clemson didn't execute. They weren't able to take advantage of that foul situation. This is Davis. Loses the handle. The pump fake gets everybody in the air. He can't hit the shot. Now there's where you want Davis, and he, being under the weather a little bit, didn't take that ball right up for the stuff. And when you put him on the foul line, you really have him as a disadvantage. Hurley always looking up. I talked about Cash early on having his head down when he dribbled. You can see Hurley sees the whole floor, both to the side and in front of him. And that, that shot gave Mike Krzyzewski an opportunity to get Abdul Nabi out of there, bring in Buckley, and now he's going to play fouls. With, he'll take Leitner as long as he can, Abdul Nabi, and, and hope that he can keep one of the other, one uh, at least one of them in the game at the time. That was eight assists for Hurley. Davis hit the first free throw. Cuts the lead to 14. This can cut it to 13. Well, he had 12 in his last ball game. Clemson now goes to a trap. A little trap. Davis way out front. This is Henderson in the field. Nice pass. Great and block. Blocked down by Davis. 42nd block in the year for Davis. That's three tonight. Nice job by Buckley. Nice job. Oh, my. They call the foul on Cash. Well, the whistle was a little late. Cash did commit the foul, but earlier on than that. That's four on him. 15 foul for Clemson. Henderson. Cash has four. Campbell has three. Davis has three. Forrest has three. This is a big play by Davis on the inside. He had to pick up, comes all the way across, 
That's a man with three fouls on him coming up with a perfect block. Thomas Hill is an excellent leader, too. Nice shot outside by McCaffrey. He now has four points. 56-41. Duke starting to blow this thing open. Skip pass down to Campbell. He banks it in. They can do that all night, oh, you yeah. would suspect. Let the two touch it every time down the floor. Make something happen. At this point, I wouldn't think about anything else. Abdul Nabi outside. Tyson gets it back for Plumson. Just down 13. And with the foul problems that Duke has, good job by Abdul Nabi. Went right to the body. Numbers aren't there. Hurley forces it. And has it knocked out of bounds by Clemson. It'll be Duke basketball. You know, Tim, uh, Bobby Hurley coming on the scene as a freshman, one of the things about him that's kind of interesting is that Mike Krzyzewski has said, this is your ball club. And how often, you know, Chris Corsiani as a freshman got that same kind of a, a, a award by uh, Jimmy Valvano. Say, you know, take it and make it your ball club. And he does that. A lot of pressure on a young guy to handle it that early. They call this one against Davis. Boy, Cliff Ellis just has to be beside himself. Almost all the calls seem to be against the Tigers. Well, there's Davis trying to make room with as much contact as there's been down in the post and no advantage gain there. I, you know, I didn't see the foul. The officials came into this year, 89-90, making that a point of emphasis. They were going to keep a close eye on the banging down low, try to keep it under control, but you're right. There was no advantage gain. Abelanave is fouled by Tyson. Now, this game has been called as closely as any as, that I've seen in a long time. Anything that's a touch is a foul. That's going to be three on Tyson. Clemson's over the limit already. Abelnabi will be shooting two. Tim, at the top of the show, you did point out that Davis does have the flu. He has not been himself as far as his aggressiveness. But with the foul trouble, of course, he's been on the bench most of the time anyway. Tomorrow night, a big one. North Carolina and Georgia Tech. That game in Atlanta. Well, Tech found themselves fighting for a top position in the top ten in the nation and have really struggled in terms of not being able to win any of those close games here in the conference. It's a must game for them. And North Carolina, once they got back home and got in some practice time, has played extremely well. Well, Tech's been losing on the road, though. Yep. They've been strong at home. This one's at home, so. And we're in a position to win them all. Great ball game this past weekend. Outstanding comeback by Duke to beat Georgia Tech. 58-43. Blue Devils with 13-48 remaining in the game. Everybody gets a warning, specifically Campbell and Buckley. Nice little shot by Forrest. Forrest has a good vertical leap. He only has four points. That was a nice one, 58-45 now. Buckingham out of position on the trap. Anderson wide open. as if Henderson's almost better if he has somebody in his face. Well, you know, that is a tough shot to make. You know, you, you need to get a little rhythm going. He might have been better off taking a dribble or two. But Henderson has, uh, he's had a really a fine night. Not only does he have the stats, but he's just not making mistakes out there. Clemson's got to be careful not to panic. Plenty of time left. Just over 13 minutes. Campbell inside, off balance, and gets it to roll in. Eldon Campbell. Cuts it back to 11. So far, the trap really hasn't made any steals, but it is keeping Clemson in the game. And of course, with Hurley out, that really helps. McCaffrey in the paint. Talk about a nice little touch from yep. in there. Excellent shooter. Has been in a little bit of drought lately. Inside to Campbell, and he's fouled. Foul's going to be on Buckley. 
And that's four on Clay Buckley. But those have been four valuable fouls for Michael. Yes, they have. Good point. The Duke team, because Buckley came in, he spelled Leitner and Abdelnab. He picked up four. But if it hadn't been for him, both of those fellows would be out of the game now. Billy McCaffrey comes out of the ball game, and Hurley comes back in for the Blue Devils. You know, McCaffrey's brother is a senior on the Stanford football team, and his sister goes to Georgetown. Allentown Central Catholic High School, back in my home stomping grounds. Three pretty good academic institutions. Campbell hits his 18th point of the night and makes it 60 to 48. Good solid performance. And statistically, could have even been more if they could have got him the ball. But still, with 12-28, a lot of time to go. Have a chance to get it down. Back within that working margin. That cuts it to 11. Be tougher to press this team in a trap now with Hurley in the game because he'll split some of these double teams. Ooh, dangerous pass to Layton. Back to Henderson. This one's for three. There it is. See that? A guy in his face, and he hits it. A lot of times, knowing that defender there, it gets you in the motion. You know, you, you're not standing still. You elevate off the floor in your natural rhythm. Forrest, this is for three. That's not their play. Last touch by Davis. So with 11.58 remaining in the ball game, it's Duke 63, Clemson 49. We'll be back. You may not realize it, but when you designed your home, you used Conseil Engineering. You put the table within reach of the chair, the chair within reach of the lamp. Special touches that make home feel just right. You'll find those same special touches in Mazda's MPV, created with Conseil Engineering. So feel an MPV and feel right at home. Mazda. It just feels right. with 18 points, Hurley with 12 points and nine assists. And Tim, if you're Clemson right now, trying to go full court pressure, a lot of things working against you in addition to this lead Duke has. One, Hurley's very good at breaking the pressure. Two, this game has been closely called. There's going to be a lot of fouls the rest of the way. How about Davis, Davis with the Davis. body control? You know, if you don't look real closely, you think it's Robert Bricky. He has that same explosive uh, leap. It'd be very difficult for Clemson that uh, had a chance while they were keeping this game close. There's a foul 25 feet from the referee. And it's called on Davis. You know, Davis, I mean, Bricky, rather, you mentioned Bricky injured his knee January 6th. He's expected back this weekend. Well, he's on the bench for the first time uh, tonight. Suited up, but obviously not going to play. There is a chance that he may play this weekend. But it'll probably be to the middle of the month before he's ready to go in that normal full speed of his. Talk about a leaper. A leaper, a fine player, and he showed real leadership while he's been out working with the rest of the players. And as we said before, this is an extremely young team to be this highly ranked. Howling hits that one. A reminder to stay tuned for the Holly Farms Player of the Game Award brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of fresh chicken. Really tough to press. 
hand checking is going to be called so close. Alling hits his fourth point of the night. And back into the half court situation. Cash trying to send Hurley down the sidelines. Off Abu Nabi, it'll be Clemson basketball. Tigers have to make a run. And only shooting 30% from the three point line, Tim, so they're not going to get it back based on percentages shooting threes. Davis back in there actually committed his fifth foul on the push off. That's the third time tonight that Campbell's been called for walking. We pointed that out in the first half. He has a tendency to really shuffle those feet. At 16 turnovers now for Clemson. And they trail by 14. This is not the place you want to be down by 14 with 11 minutes remaining in the game. Pablo Nobby got in trouble and called the timeout rather than get called for five seconds. His coach wanted him to throw that ball out in the top of the key where Hurley was wide open. Clemson right now looks rather lethargic, and I can't understand it. Four and two record in the ACC, 15 and four overall. It's 65-51 Duke. We'll take a timeout for this word from our good friends at Budweiser. She's all ours. Going into business. Got something new. Gonna paint the town. Red, white, and blue. I'm coming through. Nice place. How about some customers? Until recently, my job was a nice job. I made sure everyone in our company understood our insurance benefits package, especially me. But then they started to make all these new rules and regulations. Do you know what Cobra is? Let me tell you, it's not a reptile. And Section 89? No. I still haven't found anyone to explain that one. Oh, and then there's this thing called Tefra. It's funny. I used to think that was a shampoo. <laughs> Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. remaining in the ball game. Tim Brand along with Billy Packer at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And it's a big Duke lead right now. Clemson's got to make a move and make it in a hurry. Henderson has a notion, now looks for help. Abdul Nabi working on Campbell. And, and if you look back at that play, you get another walk. Abdelnabi got away with it, and Tim, this one is just about over, and we've got 10 minutes to go. I agree with Clemson you. Clemson just doesn't have the weaponry to be able to go after a Duke. I can't figure out why they haven't done that all night. You pointed that out early, that it was available. Going into the traps, and it's, the game will be closely called. You're going to see Duke on the foul line for the remainder of this 10 minutes. Foul called on Kirkland Howling. That's his second, but there's foul trouble everywhere. Cash has four, Campbell has three, Davis has three, and Forrest has three for the Tigers. And down 14, you can no longer just expect to trade baskets. Early at the line, makes the first one. The last 10 games between these two teams, Duke's got a Average winning margin of 13 and a half points a game. You know, sometimes you right amaze about me. Sitting you, right on it now. You amaze me. Right. One, of you, one of your points in the Mazda game plan was Hurley must limit his mistakes. Well, he's only got two turnovers to go with nine assists and 14 points. Well, I think he's played a, a, he and Henderson in the backcourt together. I don't know if Henderson's got a turnover at all. And between the two of them, they've just played a great game and haven't picked up fouls either. Although they played aggressive man to man. Some people say Hurley's a stock market type guy. He's up and down all the time, but isn't that just being a freshman? Well, I, I think he's asked to do so many things for this ball club. Nice follow by Campbell makes it 69-55, and Campbell now has 23. But again, we're getting into the trading basket situation here. Which does not help Clemson. Abdelnabi 
could have clashed across the post. A little late getting there. Leitner was really looking for him. And Duke, of course, using some clock wisely, going to their 1-4 offense. The Blue Devils, 6-1 in the Atlantic Coast ah! Conference. Great Big rebound, rebound by Great Henderson. Rebound. And he's fouled. The foul will be on Cash. Oh. It's just great when you can have a guard move in there, not blocked out. Henderson playing as if he's six foot six, then puts up the soft turnaround jumper. Davis goes out, Hill in. Again, Mike Krzyzewski in some pressure games has been able to go to that bench with Ricky out of there and found out that Hill and Davis and Kubek can deliver under those circumstances. It's a lot different when you use your bench in games that are blowouts. You don't know if the guys can produce the same way if the game's at crunch time. And Anderson, what, missed three tonight? Or four? He's, He's one four. for five yep. at the line. Unusual. Makes the next one. That's 19 points. Other thing I don't understand is why big guys take the ball out of bounds. That makes them run 90 feet. Instead of getting down the court, let a little guy take the ball out of bounds. Be in position. Look at Cash. I was going to say a four shot, bad shot, but he made it and he's fouled. ACC standings right now, Billy. Duke 6-1, and one, North Carolina 5-1. and one. Clemson right behind him at 4-2. That'll change tonight, one way or the other. And you'll notice every time Clemson takes the ball out of bounds, it'll be Campbell. And then he'll walk the 90 feet down the other way. <laughs> He's got one shot coming. Both teams now over the limit from now on in. Big rebound by Campbell. Allen for three. Air ball. Follow inside by Tyson. Locked not, down. Not goaltending because that ball wouldn't have gotten there. Jump ball, possession arrow belongs to Duke. Hell ball, ball, Again, Hurley, one of those intangible plays. He was in the right place at the right time. Forced Cass to take the bad shot. Nobody back. Good foul by Campbell. Abdul Nabi didn't like it. Well, he was going for the ball. Certainly not intentional. That's four now on Campbell. And that will draw the wrath of the crowd. Big man a little frustrated right now. Cameron Crazies are at work. Well, remember when uh, Coach Ellis brought this club in here and had to leave some fellows at home and had to get down to the manager to play a year ago? One of the toughest nights that he had as a coach. You had some great experiences as a player in this building. Well, it, it was a tough place to play even then. Uh, fortunately, we were able to come away, I guess, in uh, three years with two wins, <laughs> which which was very difficult. I will now be hits that one, and it's 71-57. <laughs> Particularly when they had the likes of Heyman and Mullins and some of the great players uh, that Vic Bubis had during that period. This is truly one of the great arenas in college basketball. Duke still playing that good, tough man-to-man, -man, overplaying every pass. Tyson throws that one away. Billy, you know where the only place to play the Rose Bowl other than Pasadena was? Yep, Durham. You're right. That's why I picked the Rams to beat the 49ers in the NFL playoff this year because Robinson had coached in the Rose Bowl, but that shows you that theory didn't work. I will now be with the power move inside. 73-57, Duke starting to run away with it, and I will now be now with 16 points. Cash takes it to the baseline. Hurley will be called out front. No continuation, no bucket. We came down here one time and played a football game when I was playing at Maryland. The game was at 10 o'clock in the morning because they had a triple header. There was a game here at Duke. There was a game over in Raleigh and a game in Chapel Hill, and they tried to stagger the start time. So we had our free game meal at 5.30 in the morning. Mm. And what's the bottom of the end of the story? Give me a Paul Harvey. And we lost. <laughs> That's not so funny. I shouldn't laugh at that. Strong fourth quarter, though. We just had a late wake-up call. That makes it 73-58. And 15. You know, this game is, is riding on 15. Clemson not able to make any kind of a run. 
And you have a feeling here that as Duke is, is about ready to explode in another run of their own. They've got the three-point threats Clemson doesn't. And they've got the foul shooters that Clemson doesn't have. This Duke team surely looks capable of going back to another Final Four. Mike Krzyzewski not wanting to put it in the deep freeze, but now pulls everybody up high. You know who they want the ball in the hands of Hurley. A good screen by Abdelnabi to get it that way. Under eight minutes to play. They'll just melt as much of it as they can. Shot clock hasn't been a factor at this point. Nice inside to Hurley in the reverse layup. Will not go down. Perfect execution, though. A little bit of delay game. Everybody pulled out high, so there's no help for those backdoor cuts. Oh, tough three-pointer by Kirkland Howling. That cuts it to 73-61. a little clock here. Thomas Hill drifts way back out front. Leitner in the paint. Nice pass to Abdul Nabi. Oh, he can't make the layup. Well, when you execute that well and don't finish off, that really gives Clemson a little bit of an opening here. This is a big transition. Big trip for Clemson. Early doesn't convert. Neither does Abdul Nabi. On easy layup. Campbell not coming on the ball. inside. There's Davis. Mike Krzyzewski saying, get it over half court. Give me a timeout. It's a 10-point lead. Davis only has eight, but that's a big one there. Cutting the lead to 10 with six minutes and 49 seconds remaining in this ball game. Distractions and unexpected turns. A car should be like a friend you don't have to talk to. The Mazda 626 is engineered to feel just that way, with the ability to make you feel in control. At the same time, it makes you feel relaxed. The 626 from Mazda. Get $1,000 cash back on a 1990 Mazda 626 now. Hey, ACC fan. Before you go running off to your bathroom, let's talk about the bathroom you're running off to. If your restroom isn't quite as restful as it should be, maybe you should make a fast break to Lowe's. At Lowe's, you can get a faucet that won't dribble, plumbing supplies that follow your game plan, and we even have the best seat in the house at prices that'll make you stand up and cheer. Yeah! When it comes to everyday low prices, Lowe's delivers. Honey, have you seen my basketball shoes? Choosing a supermarket that fits your lifestyle is a lot like choosing the right shoes for a big game. Some are simply too expensive. Others rely on gimmicks that are out of style, like double coupons or games. Some just don't live up to your expectations. There is one supermarket that fits the smallest pocketbook and still has room for plenty of name brands. Here they are. Food Lion. If you foot the bill for groceries, try us on for size. Six minutes, 49 seconds remain in the ball game. Clemson has cut the Duke lead to 10. And Tim, uh, when you talk about execution, here's that lob that Clemson used effectively at the beginning of the ball game. Davis doing well against Abdel Nabi. And if you're Mike Krzyzewski, nothing could have been more perfect than the way he had his offense set up in a half court against the trap. But they just didn't finish off the play with the basket. That's given Clemson an opportunity to get a little breathing room here. And Dangerous a, pass. Yep. Davis picks it off. And that's not what you called the timeout for. Bunch of getting a little confidence right here. Wild shot. Dangerous shot. Bad shot. Possession arrow this time belongs to Clemson. Wait a minute. Or is there a foul? I think we have to call it against Davis. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I never did see that one. I, I, I'll tell you what. If you put... That's five on him, Billy. If you isolate Davis for this game, how in the world does he get a foul? You're kidding me. He's gone. If you isolate the five fouls Davis committed tonight, they were about five of the touchiest fouls that I've seen in a while. Well, I can't agree with that one at all. Nope. He says good night. Early exit, he'll have a chance to rest with that flu. Eight points. He probably didn't play more than 12 minutes in this entire ballgame. 
Cliff Ellis is beside himself down on the bench. He just can't believe it. He's still pacing the sidelines and threw his coat off. Well, and his team was making a real good run there. I thought that Duke was ready to explode because it looked like Clemson was accepting their position in this game. And then they made the nice comeback. And this, that, that call really turns things around. Tough break for Cliff Ellis. And giving the ball to Leitner on the free throw lines like putting Golden Fort Knox. And for Dale Davis, who never really had a chance to get involved with this game. You mentioned 8.6 rebounds. The follow by Abdul Nabi. Boy, you talk about a turnaround. That would have been Clemson's ball with the arrow. So they had a chance to score two. Instead, Duke comes down and hits for three. Opens it back up. This is Howling. Not even close with his three-point attempt. Good decision by Hill. He understands that the clock becomes the biggest weapon. Abdul Nabi in the paint. Tough shot. Blocked down by Campbell. There's Hurley going to the floor. And the foul is called against David Young. The man that made that play was Bobby Hurley, getting right down on the floor to make sure that loose ball was his. That's Young's second. You know, this Clemson team, although down now by 13 with a chance of it being down even further, if they'll look back at this game, they really should be in this thing. No question about it. I mean, they, they played extremely well for the first 12, 14 minutes of the first half. Let it get away with them. Remember, they got down by 11 right there at the end of the half. Find themselves down now uh, where Duke has just extended the lead a little bit, but with a little better execution, they're certainly capable of playing against the best in the country. Still 5.54 remaining in the ball game, but you feel that Duke is in control. As Billy said, from the end of that first half, learn to play consistently on the road and that's something that Clemson hasn't had the opportunity to break through in basketball. Young for three. Off the back of the iron rebound Duke. It's a three on two for the Blue Devils and it's knocked out of bounds up, off the foot of Young. Up 15 not a bad idea by Hurley to say hey let's go for it you know to extend the margin. Another couple of minutes you want to say forget it unless it's an uncontested layup. Get the ball back out. Use your 45 seconds or at least 35 of it. McCaffrey comes in. He'll sit Abdul Nabi down. Getting another ball handler in the ball game. Ball handler and go to that high offense. Early trying to put Cash to sleep a little bit here. And Henderson throws it away. Good job by Cash fighting his way over the screen. Mike Krzyzewski really working hard on the sidelines now, trying to keep his players awake so they don't get lackadaisical. Hurley with the pickoff. It's a three-on-one, and McCaffrey takes it to distance. Two players will be around for a long time, playing together in a backcourt, which is what Mike Krzyzewski envisioned when he recruited the two. He gives those young guys an awful lot of playing time. Tyson with the reverse layup. Tyson. See, I don't know why Duke is doing that now. You know, unless you have the uncontested job, the object is to win the game. You're up by 15. You don't have to try to go for the home run ball. Put the pressure on Clemson, particularly as good a free throw shooting team as Duke is. And Hurley's called for the foul. That's his third. Stops the clock with 4.39 remaining. Abdul Nabi comes back off the bench. Tim, you mentioned about Duke, and the only place the Rose Bowl has ever been is uh, here in the Duke Stadium, which has been refurbished very nicely. They're going to have the, uh, uh, some, the NCAA Outdoor Track Championships this year at Duke, which will be a big deal. And, and their outstanding coach, uh, Coach Bueller, is saying this may be the forerunner to have the Olympic trials held out there in that stadium, which would be uh, quite a thing for Durham, North Carolina, and Duke University. That's interesting. I may be here covering that. Covered it last year in Provo, Utah, the track and field championships. Won by LSU, both in the men and women's. Alley hits that one, and it's 80 to 67. You 
was in that 1-3-1 trap. Clemson has used it for a good portion of the second half. See if Duke can use a little bit more of that shot clock this time. They try to do it, setting screens from behind. You can see these blinds back screens trying to free somebody up. There's not a defender below the foul line, so if you get a free man down there, he's going to have an uncontested layup. You have to stay within six feet for that five count. Shot clock at five. And Clemson gets it away. Duke not executing that delay game of theirs. Oh, oh no. That was great hands, Great though. pass by Cash back to Tyson, and he lost control of it right at the top of his leap. Pretty difficult to pick that one up as close as they were on the pass. See it right here. Cash going to try to make the play. Puts it behind his back with the left hand. Tyson kind of took his eye off at a second, tried to shift it over, and couldn't make it in time. Howling for three if it goes. Yes. Howling for three. It just won't be denied here. They keep coming back. That cuts the lead to 10 with 3.39 remaining in the ball game. Now, Duke has two timeouts remaining. Clemson has three. Both teams are over the limit. And the foul out front by Tyson. Well, at least it stops the clock for Clemson and doesn't allow Duke to use the full 45 or something close to it. That's four personals now on Tyson. And McCaffrey goes to the line. McCaffrey, 81% free throw shooter. Pennsylvania High School Player of the Year last year. All-American. 6-3 freshman from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Not too far from uh, where another fellow that did so well. Larry Miller from Catasauqua, PA. About 10, 12 miles from Allentown. Had a fair career in the ACC. Listen how quiet this crowd gets when Duke's at the line. McCaffrey missed two, but then had one tap back up against NC State last week that turned out to be the critical play. Pushes the lead back. McCaffrey comes out of the ball game. It's 81-70. We've seen some great free throw shooting this year around the country. Villanova made 43 free throws to beat Syracuse in a ball game. Really helps when you're particularly going down the wire. I've got guys that go the line and just keep adding two points at a time. That foul is on Leitner. That's his fourth. 321 still remaining in this ball game. Isn't it amazing how long Leitner played with three fouls on him? Clemson never able to take advantage of getting that ball to Campbell. Now what you see Mike Krzyzewski doing, McCaffrey on the offensive end, Davis on the defensive end of the court. Eldon Campbell at the line. He's got 23 points tonight. And Krzyzewski keeps Davis right down in front of him, so he'll get him ready to go down to the scorer's table as soon as the, he gets an opportunity to go in for defense. 82-71. Campbell threading it pretty good from the foul line. Another solid performance. That one's short. Duke with an 11-point lead. McCaffrey just wanting to go to that line now. David Young with a touch foul out front. Every foul now will send Duke to the line. That's three on Young. Well, early on in the season, McCaffrey shooting right up in the 90 percentile. He's dropped off somewhat. as an unusual free throw and the fact that he bounces off the ground a little bit. On you know, we touched on this, but you have to think ahead to Charlotte and the ACC tournament, what a tournament that'll be. It should be a very competitive situation. Uh, you could envision anybody in the league winning a given game. And even, you know, Wake Forest, uh, although they're struggling right now, when you take a look at their potential and, and, and the guys that they have, it's just a matter of confidence for them to be the kind of team to knock somebody off that first round. No question, there's talent there. And McCaffrey stands behind that line about three inches, bounces a little bit, and here comes Davis in for McCaffrey. Defense for offense. 84-71 Duke. And there again, Campbell taking the ball out of bounds. Now he has to run all the way down the floor. Plenty of time for somebody else to take it in. Plus it allows his defender the rest waiting on him, for, waiting on him to come down the court. 
Campbell fires from 10 and hits. Eldon Campbell. Tigers can't waste too much time on the offensive end. Well, they have to think threes the rest of the way. 2.43 to go. You know Duke's going to hold it. You know Duke's a good free throw shooting team. They almost, it's too late to start going to Campbell inside now. Try to keep the ball out of Hurley's hands. Shot clock under 20. Hurley inside, and he's fouled. Foot fellas, you're denied again coming up to Tobacco Road. Foul is on Marion Cash. That's his fifth. So now Cash fouls out to join Davis in that same disqualification into the bench. baseline he's going to take it no matter how much time is off that shot clock you know Tim we, we talk about teams on the road I saw a great stat the other day in regard to the, the the decade of the 80s University of North Carolina on the road in the league 49 and 21 it, it's an incredible record As a matter of fact it's better than the record of six of the other teams in the league had period as it stands coming into tonight, ACC schools are 78 and 20, Billy, outside the league. It's almost 80%. It's excellent. And a pretty good way now that you have so many inter intersectional matchups to judge just how good a league is. Latzinger in the ball game now. Hurley now 16 points, 10 assists. It's 86-73. Campbell fights for the rebound, loses it out of bounds. Campbell's gone almost the whole way. Made a good effort out here tonight. He's not the kind of guy that looks like he's putting out a lot of effort, but uh, considering his production tonight, rebounding, defensive pressure that he's put on, and, and of course his offensive production, he's had a solid game. McCaffrey to nice Henderson, and he'll pull it back out. Under two minutes to play, and this one's almost in the history books. Duke has the win. Foul by Sean Lastinger. That's his first. He just came in. Lastinger, six one freshman from Lakeside High School in Atlanta. Davis comes back in. McCaffrey goes out for Duke. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow night, nine o'clock Eastern time, North Carolina against Georgia Tech, and then Saturday, Sports Center begins at three thirty with Paul Cameron, and then Georgia Tech against the Maryland Terrapins. Check your local listings for that game. Is 28 for 36 at the line tonight, Bill. Not Excuse surprising. Now this, will, this will really serve them well, not only in the ACC tournament, but obviously they're going to be an NCAA tournament team. Very important to be a good free throw shooting team. And conversely, when you're not, as has been the case with, let's say, a Syracuse or a Georgetown in some years, 